have been preparing for um, caring for an Ebola patient for many months now. And that, those preparations have involved every part of our clinical operations uh, and our team, uh, really a multidisciplinary approach. One of the most prominent things, I think, is the training that's required so that our staff are very aware of how they need to be vigilant so that we um, identify patients who are at high risk of having Ebola virus disease and then take immediate action uh, and appropriate steps to isolate the patient uh, and to protect themselves and other patients. Um, so uh, all of those preparations are ongoing. We have trained over 700 um, staff members in uh, the use of personal protective equipment and continue to develop our policies, protocols, and procedures uh, for safely caring for these patients. Typically when we care for patients, they may move around in our institution as they require different levels of care. Uh, for these patients, however, we um, plan to place the patient immediately into a room that allows for all different levels of care so that if they need ICU, uh, intensive level of care, we can provide that um, and we can provide a range of services um, really in that isolation room without moving the, the patient throughout our institution and potentially exposing others um, to, the, to the disease. Infection prevention uh, is always a critical part of our um, patient care and clinical operations. Uh, for patients with highly contagious diseases like Ebola virus disease, we take extra precautions uh, to ensure that we are prepared to not only um, wear the appropriate personal protective equipment when caring for these patients, uh, but also to care for them in a location uh, that is safe uh, so that all of our staff and other patients and visitors uh, remain safe while we're providing that care. And there are many other aspects, including um, safe handling of laboratory specimens, how those specimens are obtained and transported and tested in our laboratory facilities, and how we um, deal with medical waste and get it safely um, out of our facility. Uh, and so there's many, many aspects to, uh, to the um, infection prevention uh, precautions. So the staff that, um, that care provide direct patient care uh, for these patients with Ebola, Ebola virus disease um, will monitor themselves for symptoms um, such as fever uh, or other concerning symptoms for 21 days after participating in du direct patient care. That is an added level of precaution uh, that we feel um, is necessary just to ensure that, um, that we are vigilant uh, in case anything may have gone wrong uh, and they have acquired the disease. However, we do feel very sure that we are putting safe policies and procedures and personal protective equipment in place that we don't anticipate that, uh, that any uh, problems will occur. Um, so we are doing that monitoring for the, the period of 21 days after care, but not any type of quarantine or limitations on clinicians. Communication is, is incredibly important in all clinical care and, um, and similarly is very important in this, uh, in this regard as well. Um, we would plan to have meetings daily with the patient's family. Um, I think the more structure uh, that we can provide, the more reassurance uh, we can give to the family members that they know what's going on. One unique um, challenge is that we will not be allowing uh, visitors to enter that patient's room. Uh, and so we are making arrangements for two-way communication uh, so that patients can um, speak with and communicate with their families via uh, electronic means. Um, and then the care team, of course, will be communicating with the patient directly as well as with the family to keep everyone on the same page. The direct patient care team, we anticipate that it would take approximately 20 providers over the course of a week uh, to uh, provide the physician, uh, nurse, and um, ancillary support care to, uh, to one patient. 
um, and then of course many others would be involved in all aspects of, uh, of the patient care in making sure that the laboratory services, the radiology services, um, and uh, waste removal and support of the, the clinical environment would also be in place. Every hour that passes, every day that passes, we are more ready. Um, and yes, I think that we have the capability and the facilities, the expertise here to safely care for these patients. Uh, and we are actively training and will um, you know, continue to, um, to train and have drills to ensure that we're ready to take care of these patients. We have to keep in mind that um, the care of these patients, as the care of any patient, uh, is really um, central to our mission, our institution's mission. Uh, and so I view this work, the preparation that we're doing, all of the steps that we're taking to safely care for these patients as part of our institution's mission of patient care. Uh, I also think that all of the preparation and interdisciplinary work that's gone on will better prepare us for a range of other um, communicable diseases and also other threats um, to really put the infrastructure in place um, for response uh, to situations like this.